Hello everybody, my name is Jim Guthrie and I have the distinct honor and privilege of leading the best team of operational experts in this industry. We have a team of fleet managers and sales coordinators and sales planners that have a great wealth of experience, uh, many of them over 15 years of experience, uh, you know, utilizing uh, trucks and loads and servicing our drivers and servicing our customers. Last week, we planned 23,267 loads on trucks. 20% of those had to be reworked at one point or another for you know, a variety of reasons, some of which are gonna be outlined here throughout this video. Our average time of pre-plan prior to the time of your empty call was about 4.2 hours. Whenever we look at our processes, our main objective is to maximize the revenue to your truck each week. We have the industry leading numbers in revenue per truck per week, and second place isn't even close. So everything we do revolves around trying to maximize the profits to your truck and maximize the revenue to your truck. All of the people you're gonna hear on this video are incentivized to make the most revenue per unit per week for you. It's so important that you have a good relationship and strong connection with your fleet manager. That's your small business advisor and that's the person who's going to help you maximize your profits every day that you're available. So please work on that relationship and that's the most important aspect of your business, especially as it relates to how we select loads and how we plan loads on your trucks. We're gonna have several folks from our team outlining how the processes work and how the loads get planned from start to finish, from tender to delivery. And so as we move forward here, let's meet our team. I'm Jenny Solomon. I am a planner for the Midwest area of Michigan, Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, and a little sliver of West Virginia. I have been at Prime. I started originally in 1998, so several years. I'm Donald Brown, or Don Brown as everybody calls me. Um, I've been at Prime now seven years. My name is Cole Baldus. I'm a fleet manager here at Prime. Been here almost eight years. Uh, I've had a fleet for five and a half years. My name is Jared Young. I've been a fleet manager here at Prime for 15 and a half years. Most of our load tenders, I believe, come over via EDI. Um, so electronically, they come over into our system from the customer to us asking us whether we want this load to accept it or to reject it, or some of them are based off of commitments that we've got set up. Just different challenges we may have with a load. If you know a receiver is not gonna take or the transit doesn't make sense, we can then reach out to the customer to, to get those issues resolved. Sounds good, our assistants will start working on them as soon as we get the loads. You would think the load would be very simple once we get the information. Yeah, and especially ones that we do over and over, however, Sometimes we get bad POs, a typo, we're all humans. Sometimes they enter the wrong information. So we have that time lag of getting the correct information back. Um, receivers, especially right now, are booked out um, with they're having some staffing issues or um, we're getting into that time of year where we're hauling more freight and receivers are, are booking out further. So that's an, always an issue. Uh, Due dates. Due dates, I, I, are a big thing yeah. too. A lot of, especially with meat receivers or produce receivers, um, you know, they can't take them outside of the due date. So if the customer tenders it with the wrong date, and they have the due date on their end for, you know, this Friday, but they sent it to us to deliver on Saturday. Well, before we can get an appointment, we've got to get the customer involved to get all that changed. So that stuff takes up time, and then it may be Tuesday or Wednesday before we're able to fix it, which then makes it, you know a lot harder to get that Friday appointment that we actually needed. We have the issues with same day loads. So a customer may ask us at 9 a.m. to cover this load at 4 p.m. today. And then if that thing is not set up absolutely perfectly, or if a receiver pushes out, that's how we get caught up sometimes with drivers on the road with loads without appointments. We start at the top um, and, and roll through till the end and yeah. going through nine o'clock the next day based on their PTAs. Um, all of that information, the more correct information that we have based on PTAs, their home counters, how long they want to be home, um, all of that information plays in a role in how we are able to plan. Like Don said, it's a huge giant puzzle. Um, we may have 
200 to 300 drivers to plan that day. Um, we may have 200 to 300 loads to plan. So you're gently trying to balance um, and keep your customers happy and trying to produce the most revenue for the drivers all at the same time. So if you're on a plan and all of a sudden your fleet manager says, hey, can you help out on this load instead? Generally, it's from one of those issues, a claim, yeah. a driver had a mechanical issue, an accident or ill, and this is a hot load, a customer right. load that we cannot miss. Right. So generally, that's when you start getting those messages in the, in, in the afternoons right. or evenings, hey, can you help out? Right. Closest load that we can put you on that makes sense. Um, however, there are times, even I only have Michigan, Ohio, and Western Pennsylvania, so I have a small geographical area. However, we have a lot of loads. But there are certain times where we may not have as much freight in one of the states and we have to shift the drivers around. So I think I, st I start out my day every morning finding out where my drivers are in the area, where my loads are, and if I need to move things around. And I think, and I know you guys do that yeah. as well. Um, and it also helps between the areas when we're planning. Um, we may have 25 to 30 extra loads that day and our neighbors may have 25 to 30 extra trucks. So we are able to communicate with each other and make sure that we keep the drivers moving where the freight is. We want drivers moving. We don't want people sitting at shippers because we have five more loads that they could be on right now. Right now it's really busy. Prime has done a great job. Our commitments are um, exploding. We, yes. are, we are so booked. So it is in everyone's best interest to keep the drivers moving. That is definitely not something that we take lightly to let people sit. We get a notification as soon as the load gets pre-planned to the truck, which prompts us to go in and uh, examine the load to make sure it meets all the parameters that we're going to need for the truck that day. Yeah. One of the things that our sales team really relies on us to do is to relay information that we're going to know about our drivers. There are things we're going to know about our drivers that our sales team has no way of knowing. And so if a driver is somebody that really prefers to run the night shift, or if it's somebody that uh, doesn't want to run the night shift at all, we're going to have that knowledge from our relationship where we work with that driver every day. And so our sales team requires or needs us to relay that information to them so we can get the right truck on the right load. One of the worst things a driver can do is to send the load refusal and then no additional information. The additional information is vital. It lets us know why they don't want to do it and gives us information to be able to let our sales team know why they don't want to do it. So when that next load offering comes, we're not putting them on something that's similar or identical to the one that they just refused. Um, so that information it really is vital. That uh, and, and So when a driver refuses and then doesn't say anything, it's generally going to prompt us to reach out to that driver to find out what the reasons are. I'm, I'm going to review the, the, the pre-plan. I'm going to determine if it's a good load for my truck or not. And if I think it's a good load for that truck, I'm going to offer it. You know, and then the driver's going to have that opportunity to make the decision, just like any driver would, whether they want to run that load or not. And getting an accurate PTA from drivers when they're going home or communicating, this is a big one, communicating um, if they know they're going to be tired and they need that PTA pushed to the next morning, getting that communication from the driver as early as possible. So if a driver starts their day and they know they're going to have to put in 500 miles that day, at the end of that day, they're not going to be ready to reload. They're going to be ready to grab wash out, grab fuel, get something to eat and go to bed. And so the earlier that somebody can let us know that, that, hey, by the end of this load, I'm going to be tired, set my PTA for the next morning. It allows us to get that PTA set accurately right away and lets our sales team plan accordingly. Um, so those types of, of PTAs are, are vital in the day to day operation. You know, our sales team, including ourselves, we're all incentivized to make the best, most efficient plan possible and have the most money on each truck that we can possibly put. Uh, they're incentivized to push as many loads out of their area as they can and cover them and take care of their customers. We're incentivized as getting loads onto our trucks, keeping our trucks as profitable as possible. It makes no sense to burn a truck or you know, do anything negative to the truck because we want them to make as much money as possible. As we close, if you have further questions, you can always spend time coming in, asking any of our operations team, or you can spend time shadowing our operations group at any time to further understand how our processes work. You know, we'd be remiss if we didn't recognize all your efforts out there. Thank you for all you do. We, we uh, want you all to please be safe and God bless everyone. Thank you.